Hey, I'm Pascal from Horse Pixel, and uh, welcome to another week, another video. And the last couple of weeks have been hectic for me. Uh, of course, last week we have the whole announcement of Apogee being, well, back as a publisher, but also as the publisher for Residual, the game I was working on previously, and here and there still am tinkering with it. Um, and of course, we're porting it to consoles and, and stuff like that. So um, Residual isn't completely done yet, but I have... Um, a lot of time to work on the next game or the next prototype and that's what I've been doing um, but of course uh, the announcement and everything around it and we're still doing some stuff to residual like localization and uh, the porting process a bunch of things that often require some time for me almost every day uh, I spend a couple of hours just working on those type of things but the time I have available I've been putting into the new prototype just tinkering with it here and there and when you start a new prototype like this um, it can go very fast so every day developing it you just throw a lot of ideas onto the screen uh, see if it works and you draw graphics and you put it in there and code happens and things happen and I didn't want to miss out on that for you guys on the channel so um, every day every spare minute I had was put in the prototype and then I recorded uh, some of the things I've been doing that day so this video is pretty much an overview of um, last week's last week when you're watching this it uh, that's too confusing it's a lot of days just um, things here and there and you'll see the process from uh, where we left off a couple of weeks ago up to the point where the game is now or the game it's a prototype and i'm not even sure this is gonna be a game for now this is just a project i'm tinkering with and um, we'll have to see if this turns into a game at some point or not i have a lot of ideas so hopefully it will be a game uh, but let's check out what i've been doing uh, after the intro day one diving into the code for the new game um, I started with the residual code base and stripped it from all the stuff that made residual residual. So now I have a very empty framework, but it's um, very up to date and has all the stuff for interface handling, um, input, output, audio, all that stuff that I use in all my games is now here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is have that road up and running. I started by grabbing uh, various pieces I need, various pieces of art from the mock-up I showed before. Um, we now have uh, different road segments, uh, 32 pixels, so two of the vertical columns is one road part, and this is another, this is another, and then two for uh, the cross road thingy. Um, we have a couple of side boardwalk thingies, um, and these will be combined into creating the background. And then I have all these cars that I created. Um, very easy, going to be making all these cars in different colors and that doubles the amount of cars and then we're going to add a couple of other versions but I don't think we'll need a lot of cars. Let's just first get the road up and running. In situations like this um, I try to design things as flexible as possible. I know I need a road but I'm not sure what this road is going to be or does it have to uh, be something else? Will we eventually have some sort of desert that we're arrive driving to? or? Will we go very crazy and have a futuristic area or maybe a hell level with a lot of fire? I'm not sure yet, so I'm gonna design everything as flexible as possible. It might end up just being a road, but it's also possible that we add very normal things like um, obstacles on that road. And in that case, we need to be able to do stuff with those obstacles. So uh, it's not gonna be just a normal road but I have no idea what it's gonna be. So I'm gonna create this code as flexible as possible so that I can later add stuff to it and change it and modify it and tweak it into being different things. And I might not do that. In that case, it will just be a road, but a very flexible road. So the road will be built from road segments. Uh, we have just a couple of them, um, road segments. I'm not sure yet how wide this road is gonna be, but my idea is that we just see this short part that scrolls to the right building the SWAT car drives into the screen and that's about all we need. So I'm not expecting a huge long road, but it is possible by simply changing a couple of numbers. And um, next up is just initializing the street view. We will have a building view, a street view, and perhaps a side view, because I also thought it would be cool to be uh, dropping into a building from a rope or something. And who knows? For now, this is gonna be the street view. This is just randomly picking segments of the road and of the sidewalk. And then we're gonna combine those on the screen to draw a road. 
And the end result is pretty much this. Uh, road segments, blocks everywhere, uh, sidewalks, and the first SWAT car. It's not moving, it's not doing anything, but it is an actual game world right now. Uh, this is not a drawing anymore, so uh, next phase is getting some movement in there, getting that car at the center, driving in, getting some building graphics there. Um, but a good first step, and the code is up and running. Now we can really start diving into um, building this out into a game. All right, so uh, just another little update. It's a day later now. Um, been working a little bit more on it, and now I actually have some code up and running. And just I just had to show you this part that I'm now uh, where I'm now at. So, uh, let me uh, remap it, and uh, here we go. So obviously there's still a sound effects missing, but uh, we have a SWAT car driving in there. We have a bunch of stuff going on here. Uh, this is a lot more improved than what I had yesterday. This is now actually much better done. And the character is uh, running around. Just a crude animation, still needs improvement. But um, a lot of progress made today. And that brings us to day three. And um, it's hard doing this video, recording all that stuff. I'm also working on a new prototype because when I'm into something new, I really go for it and I'm in the zone for a couple of hours. Um, I also know this video by the time you're watching this. Um, right now, as I recorded, it's April the 16th. Um, I guess this won't go live until 28th, 27th of April, two weeks. So. I'm just trying to give you an overview of everything I've been doing the last couple of weeks. And day two and day three, I'm gonna boot up the game. Hang on, I just, I'll just boot up the game and let me show you where we are right now. I'll get the controller and... Um... All right, here we go. Let's see. Um, as you can see, the characters have gone a little bit into a different look and style. Uh, still figuring out stuff and mixing things and just trying to find the best look for everything. So everything you see right now could change. It might end up as a spaceship before we release or whatever. It can all change. That's kind of the fun of prototyping. So um, we now have this uh, guy running around. If I can get my controller working. Here we go. Run around and the squad is following it. Uh, these little numbers are debug numbers. I want to see if their group is correct because we can now split up the group. They are now group one. This is group zero. And we are now splitting up from the other area. Of... So now we're splitting up from these guys and we can create groups and we can do that again by creating these two and split up. So this way you can just position people at certain hotspots and they will stand guard or whatever as you progress and move on. And of course, we can then also regroup by walking into them and pressing the same button. He will join our group and we can move on. And the same goes for these guys. Just regroup everybody into one big group and we can split it up when we want. And, uh, it will always split in the middle in half. So um, right now it's a pretty big squad of six members. Maybe we'll start with four. And so then you split up in two and then in singles. But um, I just wanted to see if this mechanic was working and it does. So as you can see, I try to build up my game prototypes. I'm really going for those core mechanics, layer for layer. Uh, first thing we needed was a road, that car driving onto it, the soldiers jumping out of it, then controlling those soldiers, now splitting them up in teams. Um, still a couple of things I need to do for this whole squad stuff and, and regrouping. And you also have to be able uh, to control the second group. So you have to be able to swap from the current leader to the leader of the other group that's just waiting there so that you can really go everywhere with your soldiers and pretty quickly it's not going to be turn-based this is going to be real time and uh, the soldiers that you leave behind or are standing guard will do their own thing eventually that code isn't in there but they will shoot at enemies they will patrol the area they will they will hold their grounds um so the next thing i'm going to do the rest of this day hopefully make it work so that you can actually swap between these groups and the next stage, uh, which is probably going to be like on Monday or the Tuesday, we'll need to be able to enter the building. And that's really where uh, most of this game is going to be played inside buildings. So it's going to be a very uh, important thing to add to the game. But the reason I didn't start with the indoor area is because uh, this whole SWAT car driving the street, your guys jumping out of it and then entering, breaching a building. 
that was my main vision. That's where it started and that's what I wanted to see on the screen. I'm getting that feeling, a cool vibe around it. I'm not there yet. This looks interesting and fun, but it's missing that little uh, coolness. So maybe we should have these guys a somersault out of the van or something and really spread out. Code like that needs to be added, but right now um, that's not important to the gameplay. The indoor building is. So the next big thing I need to work on, create procedural generated buildings. Add avatars, non-playable characters, enemies, hallways. In just a few weeks, because the whole point of doing a prototype, give yourself two or four weeks maximum and get that stuff up and running. You need to figure out if this is actually fun to play on as a game or if it's just fun in your head, but as soon as you try it, it's not fun anymore and then we need to move on to something else. But I'm hopeful that this is actually fun to play. We'll see. All right, um, day four, but it's a week later than day three was because uh, this week, last couple of days was uh, very hectic. The Apogee showcase, uh, the publisher announcement, the residual announcement, everything happening. I really didn't get uh, into the game. So it's now uh, Thursday, April 22nd. Uh, this is day four of development, I guess. <sighs> to be honest, all that stuff and doing all the social media and all the messages and all the things, all a lot of fun and a lot of energy comes from it, but I can't wait to just dive into the game. So uh, today, Thursday and tomorrow, Friday, my plan is if everything goes to according to plan, work on the game and just uh, dive into it. Um, I have to start working on this. Um, the inside of the building, first thing I'll have to do is figure out how I'm gonna do this in code. I'll have to split it up so that walls, as you can see, uh, horizontal walls or well, horizontal walls are uh, like that, but vertical walls are just little thin bars. Um, I have to figure out how to uh, draw this. Do we really keep them this thin or do we make them like one tile wide, which is like 16 pixels? So that would make them this thick. I think that's a little bit too big. So I have to figure out how to create these walls as graphics, but also how to do it in game code and in data and just make it work. Um, first thing I'll do is start with a rectangle. That's the whole apartment block. And then we'll have to uh, create smaller rectangles in there and just uh, figure out how to do it. And not so much just how big are we gonna make them, but also how do we handle collision detection with all these walls. So um, a bunch of stuff to figure out and that's the first step. And then uh, we'll slowly start working on the code. It's now a couple of hours later. I've been tinkering with the walls and how to structure it and how to get it on screen. Um, and I had to cave in for uh, thicker walls. I thought I could do it with thin walls, but that just adds so many uh, problems that you have to find a fix for. And it's not hard. You can put that time into finding a fix for it, but it just uh, creates a bunch of problems that I don't need and uh, thick walls they do actually work. Um, it looks uh, more bulky, more massive, more structured. So um, it's up and running now with thick walls. Uh, let me just pop up the game and uh, show you how it looks right now. It's not a lot to look at, but it works. Okay, so as you can see, vertical walls are now pretty bulky and thick, but um, I think it also has a certain charm to it. It's, it's not that bad. Most of my time was now spent into creating a code that will generate the walls and connect all these walls uh, so that we have the right corners everywhere and we even have a shadow line over there um, a lot of code makes up this mess i can now just create a square right over here and then the code will create the textures on it so that it looks like a correct wall in all the corners and all the areas so um I, I think this is pretty much uh, how it's gonna be. Uh, these graphics are not final. This is just something I whipped up very quickly. Um, it's now just trying to get all this logic up and running. And the graphics for this look like uh, this. It's all split into 16 by 16 tiles, but these walls will always render twice the height. Same for these corner walls. So um, this is how you build a single room. Now we'll have to be able to attach other rooms to it and doors and a bunch more stuff to be added. But the walls are in the building. All right, it's day five now. This is the final day for this video at least. 
um, I decided to first start working on a palette that I want to use for this game. I um, talked about this every now and then on the channel. I like to limit myself to a certain amount of colors when doing pixel art or graphics for a game. This brings all the graphics together and makes it feel like it's one thing. But also um, limiting yourself is something like the amount of colors you can pick um, spawns creativity. It will have, it will make me think uh, more creative about certain things that need to be drawn. So um, this is the palette I came up with. A large part of this or many colors like the blues and the orange are colors from residual, uh, this gray as well. But I also added a new blue, a new gray, a different skin tone right here, a different type of purple and a different green. And um, I'm not sure if this is gonna be the final palette, but it's an interesting one. So after designing this palette, I figured I had to recolor everything to fit in that palette. And that's the best way to check if these colors work or not. So there are two reasons why I started working on the palette today. Um, first reason, I've been creating a bunch of graphics already uh, in different palettes and just grabbing colors here and there. And um, I better start making a decision on which colors I want to use right now before I have to redraw everything and recolor everything. So that's one good reason. The other reason is we still have our intern, Dylan, if you're watching, hi. Um, he's available and he isn't working on residual anymore, obviously. So um, I should set some goals, limits and decide on certain things so that he can actually start throwing some graphics around in these same colors and maybe draw some walls. And we'll be needing a bunch of furniture for these buildings, carpets, floors, uh, characters, of course, animation, animated characters. We need a lot of graphics for this and can't have him sit around doing nothing. So I needed a palette and I need to set some rules on uh, how big are the characters, what type of animations are we looking for and all those things. So that's uh, actually the thing I'm doing today. I wanted to work on all the buildings and the walls and I will hopefully have some time for that later today. But this needs to be done so that on Monday, uh, it's now Friday as I record this, on Monday you will we'll be able to start working on this or on Tuesday. So I um, need to define certain things so that both he and I are working on the same type of graphics and same type of look and style. And uh, that's what I'm starting with today. And I'm almost there. I have recolored almost everything. Next step is figure out how big I want my characters and um, how many type of animations? Do I want to keep them uh, like left and right facing only? It works, I've done it in various games, or do I want to really have them look in four directions or maybe go crazy in eight directions? We have an intern with pixel art talent, so maybe this is, uh, it's gonna be a lot of work having a character in eight directions moving and animated. We'll see if that's a good plan or a bad idea. Okay, so little update, uh, it's a few hours later now. And uh, by the way, if you're wondering what these green numbers are above the heads, that's because we can split them up and I want to see which squad are they part of. This is just a little debugging. There's still something going wrong when I split up and regroup. So I need to figure out like, like this, I want to regroup, but now we have this guy separate from that. So, uh, let's see if we can yeah, regroup. Now there's still something going on, but um, we'll get to that. First of all, I did add this little thing right here. Now breach is shown and it should be above the door. But the idea is that this is where you breach the building. So when we breach the building right now, we enter the building. Uh, this is all very rough. It has to have an animation, smashing the door, um, wood breaking everywhere, and then fade in, fade out to this. And um, we're now in the building and as you can see, I, I went back to having thin walls. I came up with a simple solution. It was actually much easier than I thought. And I think this will work. So I'm um, yeah, just tweaking and uh, changing the graphics a little bit and figuring out what, uh, how to create these graphics and how to create the buildings and how to uh, write the code and the data behind it so that we can actually uh, start doing cool stuff like um, checking the hallways and splitting up in groups and then having this group go through that hallway and this group through this hallway and uh, leave one man behind or leave two men behind and split up. Move this one over here, then take control of this group, move into the hallway. Then these soldiers move from this hallway into this hallway and we have a fight or something. Well, uh, 
lots of fun. The idea is pretty cool and um, we're slowly building a game, I guess. But that's it for this week. Um, good progress, but it's been a hectic week and I think I'm taking the rest of the day off. It's now almost three in the afternoon on Friday, so I'll let's have just a little break time. Probably gonna play The Last of Us 2. I'm, uh, I'm pretty far into the game now. I think I'm reaching 14 or 15 hours of gameplay in that one. Um, it's an experience. It, it's uh, very different from the type of games I make, but I really enjoy the sneaking around and all that stuff. So that's a good inspiration for this game, I guess. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Next week, we'll be talking about this some more, but if you want a very tiny snippets of sneak and peeks and thingies, uh, of course, jump on the Discord where I'm showing stuff as I work on it, but also my Instagram, I show little stories that just don't fit in YouTube. So um, I'm everywhere, I guess, and that's the reason I'm taking the rest of the afternoon off because it's been a hectic week. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you next week. Bye.